We now return to Let's Play Pre-Dynastic Egypt. Okay, so when we last left off, I was contemplating uh, what I want to do with my people. And uh, I've actually gone online and had a peek at a optimized strategy guide, which was probably bad for me, but it also proves uh, my major complaint with the game that it is a little too on the rails, it's a little too uh, scheduled out. Um, but I did learn some interesting things about the game mechanics, and one of those things is that the rating... Let's look at this again. The, uh, the rating statistics, namely what you'll get out of the raid, actually changes depending upon the population as well as the strength of the tribe that you are trying to raid. Uh, what that ultimately means is that you can kind of game the system a little bit. Uh, for example, right now, I'm thinking about putting in some more food so that I can get a worker on the next turn. Um, if I go ahead and start the raid now, it will basically lock in what it will cost me every turn uh, as well as, well, n not the success, but what it'll cost me every turn to do this. Um, but then by getting a worker after I've initiated the raid, that will then increase the amount that I will get out of the raid. So it's a little cheap, but what I'm going to do for starters is I'm going to take, and did we... There we go. Just get rid of all those words on the, the screen there. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and raid. Uh, so that that has sort of informed my opinion about what to do with that, because as things are now, uh, I would basically get the same amount um, for the trading, because it's at three, three to one trading. Um, but at this point, since I've got the greening of the Sahara, I could just go here for three and not get... Uh, or not have to spend my production point. But the trade-off in all of this is that by doing this where you will get more for having more people, raiding is actually a, a more uh, effective thing to be doing in order to get resources. And since we're not friendly with them, uh, in the end it's actually probably going to be faster to raid them and make them hate me that I can then conquer them rather than turn them into friends and then assimilate them. So I think we'll just go ahead and do this. And uh, this is going to be pretty bad, but here we go. We'll raid them. And the thing is that once you've locked this in, you can take your guy back. So we're not actually fully committed to this. This is now just going to hang out here and we'll stay in stay locked in. I feel like this mechanic uh, needs to be changed because it is exploitable. Uh, we are about to exploit it. Anyway, tutorial. Relations with the tribe. Manage relations with neighboring tribes wisely or one day you could find yourself surrounded by enemies. Remember, enemies will try to attack you and they can be conquered by force but with friendly tribes the efficiency of trade is 20% higher and you can join with them peacefully. So, do we actually have no, we can't go back uh, to trading them, so I'm not really sure what it's talking about. Maybe after the raid is done, we'll have the option again. But uh, So anyway, we've locked it in to where we need it to be. And now I'm also going to put these guys out here and try to get a worker on the next turn. Uh, so this Greening of the Sahara only has three turns left. I kind of feel like I want to use that here just so I get that extra one food but I'm also giving up extra production at this point. So it's kind of a trade-off whether I think that production point is going to be useful in the future or not. I guess we'll just go ahead and keep it as it is. So we will exploit the extra resource while we still have it. And with that, we will go to the next turn. My discoveries are right. We don't necessarily need to or want to do that just yet. Uh, I mean, I guess we can. There's really no harm in doing so. We're going to spend the points anyway. We need to get to early rituals, but I think we need to do this first, because by the time we've done all this, we should be able to, well, 
let's hold off because I can go for it any any time. It's not like that price is going to change at all and, and we're still going to be making our culture. But uh, once we've got a new person, we can begin building. So let's just do one thing at a time right now. And we will go to the next turn. The myth about the f ancestor Falcon. Many generations have passed since our tribe began to honor the Falcon. Even the elders can no longer remember how it all started, but people believe that the great Falcon Horus founded our tribe and was our ancestor. So we already get some extra culture anyway. And now we have enough for another worker, which I will take. And we will put someone now towards doing that. And I will have this person continue the exploration. And there's another thing I discovered about exploration. Uh, upcoming, once we complete one of these missions... Uh, maybe we haven't got it yet. Um, there will be a 50% reduction in uh, scouting time. And what that means is that uh, we will basically be... I think I'm stuck here now, actually, that I look at it. Because if I move myself to scout, I lose my resource there, and I don't I won't have enough for the next turn. For the next five. Anyway, uh, so w that 50% reduction is actually the 50% reduction of the total, not what is left over. Another thing that should probably be fixed, so it's not exploitable, but what it means is that, say if I go explore this place, seven, I only have to explore half, round it down, and once we hit that point in time, it will auto-explore the rest. Uh, likewise with these three, so so what that means rounded down is that out of the seven I only have to explore three turns. Uh, out of this I'll only have to explore one turn. So uh, this one we need to explore fully because I guess that is down the road when that happens. Um, we're, we're still a few away. We need to get to eight I think is when we unlock it. Um, so we need to get the production here right away, but anyway. Uh, looking down the road, what that means is that all these little areas around me for exploration, uh, I can basically reduce the amount of time I need to actually spend exploring them. Uh, so, we do need this going on, and we do need this going on, but I think I'm going to move you here instead of making production. We do need that production, but we also need to build that stockpile of food up again, because now we're going to need 22 people. Uh, but... We should be getting 24 out of conquering this, but now that I've added another person, we'll also be getting more. Uh, so, in the end, this is a better way of doing this, I guess, mathematically. Uh, even that turn we spent, uh, you know, gain gaining resources uh, elsewhere, it still makes up for it by raiding them, which is weird. But anyway, um, also, also, also... Yeah, I really can't do this right now, can I? I was thinking I would go ahead and I would do the uh, experimental farming. Well, okay, so we can do this right now. Um, experiments with wild wheat and barley developed into an agricultural breakthrough. Experimental farming. Gatherers apparently noticed that a seed dropped on the ground will germinate. So, after successful experiments with wheat and barley, farming appear. Okay. Construction and constructions. In the building menus, we can begin to build the whole area or even the district at once. That doesn't make a lot of wording sense, but construction does not happen automatically. You will need to move workers onto a site of construction, and each turn spend production until construction is complete. So now we've unlocked the buildings area. It will improve areas and help increase the growth of resources. And so, what we're looking for... Uh, this field of grain in two areas. What that means is that we need area 1 and area 2. So, by doing field of grain area 1, it's going to cost me 4 production per turn, and take 2 turns. These fields, richly fertilized by the Nile mud, could provide the richest harvests in the world. It will also give the uh, improvement of one extra food production. 
So we'll go ahead and start the building of it. And you see now down here we can just insert a worker whenever we please. Um, but... I'm tempted to take this guy off and do this, but here's the thing. We lose the food. This, uh... This is going to take a while, and every turn we are not doing this, it's going to make my overall gain less. So I'm not super thrilled about that. The only other thing to do would be to get rid of this guy. To take him out for a turn or two. We can sustain two turns of lost production there. Maybe I could maybe I could do a swap on them. So I get this one going. We'll we'll lose out on food for a turn. And then we'll swap them because that'll be yeah, let's try that. Although no, we need the food because this only has a few turns. So this one getting done first is actually more important. The growing threat. Scouts reported that our neighbors, the Flax Flower Tribe, considers us weak and gathers warriors to raid our settlement, but they can still change their mind. Our goal is to become friends with them or increase the tribe to five so that they see we have a lot of people and we're dangerous. We have nine turns until this happens. This is not the Flower Tribe, so they are elsewhere, but uh, we definitely need to get that done and... Should we just do one more turn? It's one more turn with the greening anyway. I really want this for production, but what are we at? 22? We do need to get that going. This is actually kind of hard now, uh, deciding what people should be doing, but I guess we need this done first, and that will improve that. It's overall a better thing, I feel. So, uh... Yeah, let's just get it done. Alright, Field of Grain Area 1 is built. Your builders have successfully finished the improvement of the area. And the greening is done. So we need to go back to this and I suppose we could also do an exploration. We can afford the one drop there. But we need to be exploring so that we can potentially gain some of the uh, some of the bonuses. We might find a bonus. So let's try one turn of that. Okay, excellent. That's actually very helpful. Tutorial hotkeys. Um, so the only thing that is not really intuitive there, uh, was the H key. Found 11 food. Scouts came across a fertile glade where they found a lot of tasty food. They collected everything they could and brought it home. So that's good. Um, if we take now, and I guess we could just go back to this, producing one food at a time. Well, I mean, I guess at, at this point it doesn't really matter uh, because of this. So... For me now, I think maybe instead of futzing around, we now have the ability to unlock this second field of grain, uh, which we should probably get started on, actually. Because um, once we do, we will get a building, or we'll, we'll get a 10 bonus. So think about this we're going to get 24, we're going to get more than 24. Uh, so we'll be able to pay for this worker immediately. So that's our fifth. Um, if we do this one, that's ten, which is probably halfway to another one. Should I be doing that right now? We really need someone to come back so I can start using production. Because this is going to cost me five this time for three turns. Well, we can at least get it started. Because it has to go on the books. Uh, doing one turn of it would wipe me out of production. So we really 
we really need this guy back before we can start taking off and doing anything super useful. Uh, how far are we away from the next... We need primitive dwellings. We also do need to be looking at some of the authority, however, which is the next resource, because that will unlock the cults, and the cults will allow me to have access to the gods and the bonuses that they provide. So, I think because we will be... I mean, it's just every, every time I'm missing from this, I am incurring a penalty, basically, on my overall gain. Um, so, you know, let's go ahead and just... Let's start scouting. Uh, I can afford a couple turns of minus one. And if we get this started to go down around the areas, uh, I ought to be able to use that to exploit the 50% thing that's coming up. Okay, we now have a new discovery. Uh, as usual, because these ones really only unlock other things, uh, I'll want the immediate bonus of gaining the new resource. So we'll start with early rituals. Complex spells, ritual dances, and sacrifices. The Egyptians believed that these were the ways to affect the spirit world. The cult's menu will be available, and we will get a plus one authority growth every turn. Discover. Authority and cults. In our tribe, the first priests and a new resource have appeared, showing the level of the leader's power, authority. We can spend authority honoring various gods and spirits in the cult's menu, or use it for strong-willed decisions in various situations in the game. All right. Early rituals. People believed in the divine powers long before the era of the ancient Egyptians, but with the advent of the Neolithic, the rituals became much more complicated. The first priests appeared, and people believed that only they know all the secret prayers and rituals. Okay. People's respect for the leader needed for difficult commands. What are those commands? Honoring the various cults ensures the support of the divine powers. We now must honor a cult because it will not let me go further, and right now we only have the first three. Forefathers offer sacrifices to the spirits of our ancestors, asking them for guidance and protection from evil. We will gain five turns of an extra production of uh, culture. Falcon Horus. Ask the all-seeing falcon for good luck on hunting. Hunting and fishing will increase by two. And heavenly cow nut. Prayer to the heavenly cow who gives birth to the stars for the fertility of our land and cattle. Uh, gathering, farming, and cattle breeding all gain plus one. Well, obviously you gain more food from this, but how much do we actually have? Let me let me see real quick. So that's a that's farming, that's gathering, that's fishing, that's hunting, that's hunting. It's only hunting and fishing. So we'd gain one, two, three, which would go plus two. So that would ultimately create two areas of three. I think uh, I don't have the choice of skipping it, unfortunately. I was going to say I think I would just wait until we get this, but we can do a big gathering here. Because otherwise we're doing gathering, farming, and cattle breeding. And that's only opening up two, which would be a four and a... well, no, it would be a three and a four. So ultimately we'd gain more by doing these three and turning everyone on that. Yeah, okay. I, You know, food really is probably the most important just for gaining all those workers, but... Uh, primitive dwellings... Oh, right, we haven't unlocked that yet. Well, let's just do this one then. Uh, ask the all-seeing falcon for luck on the hunt. The falcon is our totem, and the defender of the tribe. He flies high in the sky, sees and knows everything. Our hunters ask him to give them strength, acuity of vision, accuracy, and speed. 
Okay, so we can see here that we're doing a lot better. So even if we're just going to have the one guy, which I think we should probably change, uh, putting him here, we're at least getting production. Uh, also makes me want to move this guy down here. And I really want to get this done. That's two turns of this. But I really think we need to have this going. We're about to get one more in one more turn. That would only be one more turn. So we'd be missing out on three food for this. But that's one more turn we're putting off production. Oh, this is difficult. 22. So, well, okay. Assuming we're going to get 20, that would be an extra 6, so it would be 20 there. I mean, basically by putting somebody here for however long, it would enable us to have that extra person. Almost right away versus the production, but we need the production here soon because that's how we're going to build this field of grain. By putting that off, we don't have the ability to do this. Okay, we're going to have to do it this way then. For a turn. Raid on the Cow Nut Tribe. Our men approach the borders of the Cow Nut Tribe and are ready to begin the raid. Warriors are known as weak. Probability 90%. So our loot went up by 4. In case of failure, we'll lose 2 people. In any case, we'll spoil the relations with them. Well, we don't have many relations anyway, and this is what we committed to 5 turns ago. Victory! The gods were on our side. We successfully raided the neighboring tribe. A one-time 28 food. Relations have gotten worse. Raided tribe. You raided the tribe, and now they need some time to recover. It will require ten turns before they could return to the previous level of wealth, but we can already attack them again in five turns. So, we can attack immediately, basically, is what that's saying. Um, right now they're only at 14. To maximize that, though, it was saying that we would need ten turns from now. So, if we waited five turns to get to them... Uh, we could do half, but we could, well, so we would basically do what we did before. We'd lock in. So we're at 45 food right now. Okay. So we could lock them in, use them elsewhere. Basically, that means that we would lock them in now, wait till turn 25 to do our second raid on them to gain more food. Well, right now, let's go ahead and create our next warrior. And then we'll just finish off this mission of the Neolithic, because that will increase food even more. Wait a minute, we can't do that. we got to get this. That, that unlocks the second. So we're not... What was my... Get the five people? Oh, this thing. This thing was the five people. So we can at least get this done. So let's do that. The Growing Threat. Glory to the gods. Scouts have reported that rumors about our tribe getting stronger have reached our neighbors and they changed their mind about attacking us. Alright. So that lowered the threat down a bit, but it's still pretty high, given uh, that we just attacked somebody. Worker Limit. Our settlement has become crowded. We've reached the maximum number of workers. To solve the problem, it's necessary to div discover primitive dwelling technology and build them. Growth of the population without the built dwellings will bring heavy consequences and overpopulation. Yes, so that was the big threat uh, I was talking about earlier. That will be this, which uh, primitive dwellings not yet available. Because don't we need... Yeah, this. We need to unlock this next. Uh, which at our current culture rate, which is another thing that I guess we sh I should have been factoring in that I get that plus one for having the people. Um, it means it'll take two turns. Unless we can discover some elsewhere, which is entirely possible. Uh, this is about to scout, so I'm going to go ahead and lock in a raid here. Now you see it costs three per turn. Um, success is still 90%. And just by having that extra person, it's already gone up one. 
So I just borked myself, didn't I? Because I just got a person. I should have locked in the raid before. I did. Oh, uh, well, okay. Well, anyway, so we locked them in, and now we have two people. So I'm going to put this back in here. That'll get me 30. What's the next one? 26. Oh, my. So we'll get them next turn anyway, but I can't do anything with them now because what I'd actually need is three turns of this. I can afford to not have the production at the moment, but I actually wanted to get them here for one more turn just to complete the Blessings of Horus and uh, maximize that as much as possible. This will unlock so that this person can then take over the production and we can move everyone else back around to scouting. Uh, I think we're probably still on track, aside from what I just did there, like a dum-dum, and uh, screwed myself out of that. So, uh, we'll just go ahead and hit the next turn. That's exactly what I wanted right there, and it's actually unlocked many different areas. The El Lomari Culture. In 4600 BC, to the north of us, in the delta of the river Nile, another culture has appeared, related to the Merimde culture. Their settlements are not as large, but they're not inferior to us in development. We explored the Hill of Sandstone, and found six production. Climbing the high stony hill, our scouts found samples of hard stones, and looking around from the heights, they could examine in detail neighboring lands. So that's a nice little bonus there. Um, so we're looking at two turns there to scout. One turn, one turn, and then we still need uh, two turns here. Blessing of Horus is over. It's come to an end. We need to make new sacrifices. Uh, so kind of like everything else, the costs rise. Uh, so this one now is going to cost me seven authority to be able to unlock the next use of it. And they go exponentially from there which is why it's actually important to hang on to these and use them sparingly uh, because in order to use Horus's next ability, right now he's giving us hunting and fishing uh, but what he actually does later is provide a two-turn reduction in the creation of buildings and so that is how we are going to get to things like the city of Memphis, which is one of our six goals at the end of the game. Boy, this is going to cost a lot. But as you see there, the thing that this provides is a 200% growth in everything, every turn. Um, but yeah, so this is what I was saying last episode, where we're not going to be able to build everything, because we need to get to certain areas at certain points in time. Specifically, later in the game, uh, when the pharaohs kind of start taking over, or whoever whoever we have leading us, uh, these tombs here, they start demanding tombs be built. And it's like one after the other. And so at that point, our production needs to be ramped up to the highest, so we can just pump them out, which means we have to skip other things. Uh, but as you can see here, there's not a complete line getting to the city of Memphis. We can have other cities here, which is nice, sure, but... We can actually just beeline along here to get to the final one, then go up to Memphis. So we could skip building a lot of those things. So, you know, the game really does kind of, <clears throat> excuse me, make you focus on uh, certain certain aspects that you kind of just need to get uh, based upon your goals, and you kind of need to micromanage a lot. Uh, this is probably a very spreadsheet friendly type of game and um, I think I think it loses a lot of potential because of that really the only reason the game is even like that is because of the turn timer if you got rid of the turn timer it would otherwise be a pretty casual strategy game you could not conquer people and just be friends and do trade and you could play it in a little bit more of a variety which I feel probably would help the replayability more than just oh you failed try again because of the turn timer? I don't know. That's just my thought. Anyway, we need this guy to be making food, or sorry, production. We need to be moving our people around so that they are producing food a little more optimally. Uh, this guy needs to be doing something. So uh, there's still stuff to do. 
and uh, let's see, five turns of that, that'd be 15. We could afford to not have anyone making food. Have one person raid and go around exploring. I think that should be, well, yeah, because once this unlocks, we'll get some more food. We can already make our next worker. So here's another thing, right? If I get this worker now, it will, well, first of all, increase my bonuses here, and this is why I'm also kind of kicking myself for not locking this in before I got that fifth worker, because then I would have two workers, which would increase the bonus of this by quite a lot. But see, so I'd gain a penalty for having this, probably like a 6% penalty, but it's one more person I could have going around doing stuff. So does that offset? I don't know. Anyway, I'll think about it a little bit later. I'm going to end this one here, and I'll see you next time.